Welcome to The Sixth Cast, a podcast where we discuss real-world strategies, tips, and stories that provide helpful insights for your digital transformation experience. In episode six of Sixth Cast, Maruna and Kithmini will be talking to the COO of Loft, Jesse Sherratt, about the social impact of technology and how it can bring together more people. Jesse will be talking about how there's no one right way to innovate. It's, it's a pleasure to have you on our six cast episode this this week. We So Jesse is um, the CEO of Loft and uh, we connected with him through your CEO, Graham, and he recommended that we talk to you guys about basically your your company, what you guys have done, how much have you, you've uh, expanded and where you are in your city, what your mission is and like how you feel like you're going to contribute to Toronto with your venture. And uh, I'll just pass it over to you. Let me t- tell, tell us a little about, about Loft and how you guys started. Yeah, thank you so much. I mean, grateful to be here and uh, really appreciate that you guys reached out to, to speak to us about it. It's been an exciting journey. Um, you know, we've been at it for about four years now. Um, you know, Graham and I had connected probably almost seven or eight years ago now. So we've known each other for quite a while. Um, But Loft was really built out of a vision of being able to work anywhere that you were. You know, we walk around with supercomputers in our pockets. We've all got phones and laptops and data. And, and, uh, you know, in reality, we're all still traveling to go to a place that is supposed to serve us, to allow us to do our jobs. But we have the tools to do our jobs from anywhere. So it's kind of an outdated way of thinking. And, you know, from the very beginning, we were always work from anywhere. You know, for Graham, it was... Um, you know, being huddled over his laptop in the front seat of his car, trying to upload a file using this hotspot. Um, and, you know, when you're uploading video files or design files, that can take a lot of time and a lot of bandwidth. So it, it's not always uh, the, an easy thing to do. So we needed to create kind of, uh, we wanted to create a network of productivity touch points that people could drop in and out of, um, uh, experience different parts of the city and really build it as a network. Um, because if you think of, you know, what makes things convenient, it's frequency and access. And, you know, if you pulled out the, the Uber app and, you know, there's one car driving, it wouldn't be very convenient. But if you pull out the app and there's a hundred cars driving, it's very convenient. Um, so we took the same approach to workspace and, you know, uh, yeah, we kind of, you know, we're started with different locations. We really targeted the suburbs first, which was different than a lot of other organizations uh, yeah. because we wanted to help people reduce their commute and stay closer to home. And, you know, when people stay closer to home, they keep their economic activity there. It increases the velocity of the dollar, how many hands it passes throughout. Um, So we see a lot of benefits, you know, besides cutting emissions and improving local economies, giving people more time with their their friends and family. uh, We think remote work is probably the biggest quality of life upgrade that, you know, anyone could have ever anticipated, um, you know, in the last since we've been working this way. So it's, it's really exciting to kind of be at the forefront of it and developing a different approach than, you know, we've seen in the market to date. That's really interesting. So let me ask you a question about how you think um, after the pandemic, I'm sure so many more people probably want to visit Loft and like the different locations. Can you tell us about the locations, what kind of technical infrastructure you have there to support workers and what is a really, what's, what's really like um, an experience in walking into Loft? How are they able to get their team members in there and what does a day look like? Do they have to book time in advance and what do they need? in order to get that done? (laughs) A lot of great questions. Uh, I'll try to start at the beginning. Um, So COVID, you know, um, yeah, things have changed a lot for our business. You know, prior to COVID, February 2020, we were operating uh, five different workspaces around the GTA. Uh, People kind of got it. You know, we had a lot of early adopters. We were seeing some great user growth. Um, You know, people pretty well understood what we were trying to do. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and there was, there was a growing market for it. Then comes March, 2020 and everything changes. And, you know, (laughs) the largest global social experiment in remote work ever takes place. And all Uh of a sudden people all around the world are being asked to work from home. Uh And, you know, uh, so the conversations that we're having in February versus the conversations when we first went into lockdown in March and closed all of our workspaces were incredibly different. Right. Um, and over the last year and a half, we've really seen how that 
understanding of the solution we're trying to bring to market is, uh, you know, being received. People get it now in a way that they never got it before. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's not just the idea of going to WeWork or going to, you know, switching your office from one place or another. We're saying, no, have access to offices everywhere you go. Um, make it low barrier to entry, you know, $5 an hour for the, the smart desk. Give excellent customer service, you know, enterprise grade Wi-Fi, printing, scanning, lockers. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of different amenities and features at each loft. Um, you know, we've been building in uh, more services all the time. We really think of ourselves, um, you know, as a, as a bit of a hub uh, for the work services that the remote worker or any worker in general may need throughout the day. And I know I've given this example before, but we almost think of the modern worker as like a, as a WordPress website where mm -hmm. you're adding the plugins that you need to get the functionality you need for that day to optimize it. And mm -hmm. when you're not using it, you shouldn't have to pay for it. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of our approach to workspace. So, you know, over the last year and a half, we were able to open up again mid-summer 2020. Um, you know, we brought new locations online. We opened our Burlington Center location. Uh, you know, we saw some wonderful growth. You know, 65% of bookings between July and November 2020 were from brand new users who'd never used wow. the loft before. Um, so there was obviously a pent up demand and this market mm -hmm. was growing. And, uh, you know, then we closed down again in December when the second wave hit uh, and we've been closed ever since. And right now we're kind of planning our re-entry. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we have our Vulture Castle Field location open, 10,000 square feet, 49 unique workstations. Um, and we are going to be slowly opening up the, the rest of the network from now until the fall um, to make it available to all of our users in our communities. Mm -hmm. um, so the experience, when you arrive at a loft, I mean, it, it's really exciting. Over the last year, we've got to develop our technology quite a bit more. And uh, we've done this working alongside our partner, One Valet. Uh -huh. And One Valet is really a leader in the space when it comes to automation of buildings and, and condo towers and package delivery and creating kind of an automated uh, community experience for people who live in a tower or, you know, an apartment building. So we approach them with the idea of, you know, automating our workspaces. And, you know, to us, this is all part of our response to COVID and creating a really touchless experience. Um, you know, the anxiety that a lot of people feel about going into shared space, myself included, is legitimate. And, you know, anything that we can do to, you know, keep our places clean, reduce the amount of stuff that we're all interacting with is, you know, one way that we can continue to keep our community safe. Um, so we really, you know, pushed ahead with automation. Uh, so now when you book, Castlefield has been really our beta location where we're trying out all of these uh, automations. But now when you book in our app, you know, you get your QR code as part of your booking, uh, you know, invoice, uh, you get a summary in the app, you also get an email sent to you. So when you arrive on site, you just walk up to the front door of Castlefield, you can pull out your phone, you scan the QR code, the door swings open, and you can get access into the space. Um, every time you book, it comes with the asset identifier so that you can then wayfind to the, the workstation that you book for a day, whether it's a smart desk, um, that's $5 an hour and kind of more in a common area. We have smart singles, which are $15 an hour and more like a phone booth kind of style where it's a small office with a, a screen. So you have an external monitor, great place to do calls for the day and video chat. And then we have the smart office, which is $25 an hour and kind of for groups from one to four. Uh, and then the smart workroom, which is one to six. And then the boardroom, which is 12 plus. Um, so basically, whatever you need to do that day, uh, you know, whether it's just doing a day of video calls and needing to get in the zone or to meet with your whole team and, you know, have an event, uh, you can do it at Loft. That is really amazing. So what is the biggest uh, event that has happened so far? Has there been <laughs> a really cool client that you've had or clients that you've had? Tell us some stories about... <laughs> I mean, we've had some amazing clients. You know, we've had people <laughs> from Salesforce come in. Uh, nice. We've had people from Microsoft. We had, uh, you know, uh, uh, a CEO, uh, Mallory Green from Irene come in last week. Um, so there's some really exciting, you know, uh, tech companies and people are starting to use it. But the things that really kind of got me the most excited was the use cases that we didn't predict. 
Uh -huh. And, you know, from the beginning, we thought we were building a service for remote workers, tech entrepreneurs, consultants, freelancers. These would be the main people. Right. But what we discovered along the way is that, you know, um, we had groups renting out our spaces uh, uh, for book clubs. You know, we had a, a group of retired women who would rent out the boardroom once a month to come and do their book club. Nice. Um, you know, we had a piano teacher come in and do her lessons in oh, wow. of one of the smart workrooms. We had an esports tournament where a group of friends, you know, rented out different offices and set up, you know, brought in their Xboxes and then did like an internal network uh, wow. in the workspace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, as we've kind of evolved on this journey, we've realized that we're no longer in the business of workspace. We're just right. in the business of space and right. whatever people bring to it. I think is the most exciting part about it. Mm -hmm. um, so kind of when you put those limitations on of like, oh yeah, you kind of got to work, come here, do your nine to five, you know, have your typical business job. Um, it kind of, you know, uh, limits your perspective as to how the space can actually be used. That is super cool. And it seems like there's so much versatility to the space. So that allows so many different people coming in with their own you know, their own uh, ideas of how to utilize, use it. But tell us about, Graham had spoken about the podcast area and like the podcast technology. Um, can you tell us a bit about it, about that? Yeah, so these are all things that, you know, we're beginning to roll out. We've rolled them out in some locations. Uh, we're still doing a lot of testing and making sure everything works smoothly. Um, but, you know, some of the things that we've, we've begun to do is, is bring podcasting equipment into some of the smart offices. So uh -huh. then they become an add-on feature that you can add to your work session in the app. So say you've rented out the smart workroom, you go in for the day, uh -huh. um, you know, you're working. Oh, maybe I'm going to record something for a podcast I'm doing, or maybe I need a green screen to cast myself for a Twitch stream or something like that. Uh -huh. um, these are add-ons that you could then add to your booking live in the app and then get access to those tools as yeah. like a micro transaction that would be added to your invoice. You get access to the podcasting equipment. We've got green screens. Uh, we're now looking with three, working with 3D printers. Um, so we're starting to add in more technology all of the time that people, you know, sometimes there is a high barrier to entry, especially if you need to get a soundproof room to do your podcast in, that can always be a little bit tricky. Um, so we think that we can make it a lot easier and a lot more accessible to a lot more people. Oh, Jesse, um, just to jump on a question here. Uh, if now it looks like that you started the business solving a social problem through technology and you have been very technologically, technologically driven uh, based on what you have done so far. And I just have a QR code scan there and it really directs uh, the individual or the group to where they should be. That is pretty, uh, pretty smart. Now, were you really thinking you. of this technological <laughs> aspect uh, from the day one? Or were you trying yes. to solve a human problem, a social problem, initially? Well, it, it's a good question. And, you know, I think there's probably, they're probably the same answer. Because, you know, for me, technology has always been a tool that I can use to help drive missions of nonprofits. And I've been involved with a lot of nonprofits throughout my career. It's where I started with Group Media Television Francais Ontario in Toronto. Uh, yeah. It was, you know, a really great formative experience. And, you know, from the beginning, you know, my, my first real work experience in Toronto, I took a lot of pride of working at a broadcaster, the only publicly funded broadcaster in the world that services a minority population, a minority language population. Oh, so wow. I took a lot of pride in working at TFO. Uh -huh. And, you know, I saw the way the TFO harnessed technology, um, you know, from green screens and, you know, creating uh, all sorts of different studios and Unreal Engine and, you know, like all of this incredible 3D modeling and, and, you know, it was blowing me away at the time, you know, I was getting to use VR and AR and I was designing programs and educational learning tools that would use these platforms. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden I was seeing wow, technology can make things so much more accessible, more engaging, right. more fun, you know, and can support people who may not have as a direct route to the access and the opportunity um, that they may need or, or deserve. Right. Um, so, you know, from the get-go, I think both Graham and I went into Loft knowing that it was a technology company and right. that, you know, the app was going to be a conduit to delivering uh, the services that people needed 
um, to really succeed in their own careers, whatever that kind of makeup was and whatever kind of custom arrangement. Because so many of us are kind of a little hodgepodge of this now. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you do, you do a little, you know, something's here and something's there. And, and I think it's about seeing the confluence of things. So it's the, you know, the social impact of the nonprofit work that I've done. And then also the ability for technology to bring it to more people, um, right. which I think is, you know, a really exciting part of what we're doing with Loft. Thanks, uh, Jesse. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode of SixCast and learned a bit more about how to set goals, the importance of strong performance and bringing ideas to life.